on Talk Sport. Uh, let's dash to line two and say good morning. You're live on Talk Sport. Hello. Good morning, Tommy. Morning, sir. Dell in central London. Dell. Yeah, spoke to you a few times before. I'm a regular caller on this station. Always nice to hear your voice. You too. Very nice to hear you back, by the way. Um, if I may, may I lean over this table we're sitting at with a beer and have a chat? Marvellous. Wish, chat. I was there. Wish I was there. I'm not ringing up for no particular reason at all. But I'd just like to say I agree with you what you said about the um, councillor in Star Trek Next Generation. Lovely woman of Greek extraction, I believe, named Martina Sirtis. Now you're talking. Oh, Is that lovely. her name? Yeah, that's her name, yeah. No, not the bald one. No, no, no. Councillor Troy. Yeah, that's one. Martina Sirtis. Her Isn't name it is. sexy that she has so much intuition? Yes. I don't know what it is. is it, are her eyes brown or black? She well, seems a very, 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 very dark. dark eyes she's got. They're very dark. She could do something more with her hair. It's a bit ordinary. Uh, it do for me, Tommy. Oh, I'm not arguing here. I'm not <laughs> arguing. It'll do for me. I'm not complaining here, mate. No, I mean, no, no, she no, says, no. they'll take me out for a drink. I wouldn't worry about what her hair looks oh. like. <laughs> Believe me. Women think that all we fantasise about is, um, you know, rough and ready sex. But we yeah. actually fantasise about beautiful occasions with the women of our dreams. Yes. We do. Yeah, I mean, I mean the sex. I mean the sex part really. Also, may be quite boring, quite frankly. Yes, I, f I think the co the conversation and the company will oh. be much more much more fulfilling for me. Yeah, and then the anticipation of the whole thing. The, mm. You know. Yeah, and, and, and also I um, mentioned about something else as well, if I may. Mm, sure. Um, people that ring in and to say how much they hate you, mm. how much they hate your show. Mm. Are, am, am I? Correct and think of it. These are the same people that ring you every couple of weeks. It's a little band of people. I love them. Um, but, yeah, but they, they and must that be, annoys yeah, them. That, yeah, but Tommy, they must be listening. I mean, yeah. they've answered their own question why they, why people listen to you. I know. Because they're listening to you all the time. Mm. Mm. And although they don't like you, they keep ringing in, so mm. they must be listening. I know. So they should really sort of sit back and take stock and ask, why am I listening? They, and then there's your answer. They haven't got the apparatus to do that, I don't suppose. <laughs> but uh, not. I, and I don't want them to either, because I, there's nothing there's nothing more interesting or enjoyable than an argument. It's like, you know, you're in the... I've said this before, you're in the pub, and there's a couple over there, and they're all lovey-dovey, and you're not interested. But there's a couple Boring. over there's a couple over there, and they're having a right ding-dong. Well, you want to hear it, don't you? you well, it's trying to get your teeth in, doing it? Exactly, and it's the same with an argument on the radio, even if it's a lousy one, and... Not many of them are very good at arguing, which is a pity. Well, yeah, I, that's all I was going to say to you. If someone is, you know, don't have a reason, mm. can't sort of find a reason why they don't like you, mm. I mean, that's boring. I, I mean, I know you don't cut people off, but I would cut them off straight away because it's boring. If well, someone's arguing and giving you a good, you know, yes. giving oh. as good as they get, yeah. then, ah, oh, that's interesting. I would love somebody with the incisive intelligence and the articulacy and the wit you know, to, to tear me to pieces. But I don't think it'll ever happen. <laughs> Not in this life. Not in this life. <laughs> Tommy, so, have a nice morning, mate. Enjoy the rest of that beer. You yeah, too, mate. See you. See ya. What a nice man. What a very nice man. 08700 40 50 60 is the telephone number. We'll go to line four. Got some faxes in. I'll get to those in just a second. Line four, you're live. Good morning. All right, Tom, how are you? Thank you. Well, you? It's uh, Adam here. Yeah. I've spoke to you before. Adam. It's nice to hear you again. Um, first of all, there's a nice quote for you. Mm -hmm. um, all generalizations um, are dangerous, even this one. Mm. And here's another one. The biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. I don't know if you've heard of them before or not. No, no, they're both pretty good, aren't they? And on a completely different subject, um, have you ever noticed that the actor Lee Van Cleef, um, he's got a top half of one of his fingers missing? How, how is that then? Um, I'm not. Sh um, I'm not sure. But, um, early on in his career, I had a car accident, and I don't know if it was to do with that or not. Mm. But on the close-up on one of the scenes in a, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly at yeah. the end of the gunfight, yes, you see a close-up where his hands going towards the gun, and yeah, then you and see the close-up on it. Then, because Dave Allen, the comedian, has also got half a finger missing. Yeah. And what I'd do if I was in charge of ITV Sport is I would have a, a celebrity ten-pin bowling match. Yeah. Between the two of them. Who, who's that, Dave Allen? Who, who was it again? Lee Van Cleef. Lee, oh, Lee Van Cleef died a few years ago, though, so. Did he? Well, it would be more interesting, then. <laughs> Dead bowls. I suppose I could give him a match. I've lost a few things, anyway. So. Have you? Yeah. How, how come that? Oh, I caught it in a machine at work. So. Is it really? 
That's unfortunate. There's a very good uh, Roald Dahl story about that. Yeah, what's that? Well, I, I won't do the story, but um, well, I will do the story, actually, because I, I can kind of do the punchline. Uh, it's about a man who has an, a gambling problem. He's very affluent, very rich, and he gambles. He goes to casinos, and he goes into private rooms at casinos, and he takes men on at cards, and the game is that if they win... They win his £50,000 off the table. But if he wins, he cuts off one of their fingers. Okay. And his wife is getting really fed up with this game. And so she pays a guy who's a really good card sharp. She offers him £100,000 to, to, to play her husband. And so this game takes place in the story with this guy trying to beat the other guy, the card shop, trying to beat the other guy because he's in the pay of the wife to try and cure him of this gambling habit he's got of playing this dangerous game. Mm. And he wins. And oh, that's it. The game they play is that if he wins, he loses his... If he loses, he loses his fingers, the card shop. If he wins, the other guy has to agree to give up gambling in this way. Okay? So they play the game. The card sharp, of course, will lose his fingers. The other guy will have to give up gambling. And the card sharp wins. And the guy goes, okay, you've won your bet. I will give up gambling this strange game. And the card sharp goes to the wife outside to get paid. And the punchline, she counted out the $1,000 bills <laughs> with the one finger left on her hands. That's a story. Where do you hear that from, then? Uh, I don't know. I've got a couple of books of Roald Dahl. Oh, right, yeah, he said, yeah. Around. And I think Baricelli's going to win the Grand Prix. I'll put money on him at eight to one, sir. So. You're going for Rubens. Yep. This eight. is home race, so I reckon yeah, he'll be yeah. up for it, I reckon. I think so. you're right. I think it's a nailed on each way. I hope so. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I bet he was tempted to hit old uh, Timmy Mallet on the head of his mallet, wasn't he? Well, I got him by the lapels. It was much better. I'd had enough of him after about two shows, so I, I got him backstage and said, look. He's a bit of a pain, is he? Total. Uh, Afraid. There you go. And somebody, uh, somebody one, loves him. One last thing, you can uh, get me. Get, I suppose you can get me on a date with Michaela Strachan, could you? Uh, not now. She's happily married. Is she married? Is she now? She's married a very nice man called Duncan. All oh, right. They occasionally come and stay with us. We stay in touch. Yeah, she's nice. She is. Yeah. Fine woman. Beautiful and intelligent as well. It's not very often you get that nowadays, is it? God only knows. Well, nice talking to Tom anyway. Yeah. Do call again. I'll let you go. Thanks. Bye bye. Uh. A fax from someone in Scotland. I must apologise for those dim-witted lowland cousins of ours who seem to flood your programme with gripes. Their problem is, you see, they have no mountains to climb to view the sunrise or forest edges to sit in and watch it set. There's the life of concrete and too many people that never have time to speak to. Oh, well, there's a lot of truth in that. I do think that mountains are important. I do worry about people in the flatlands of East Anglia in England um, and the lowlands of Scotland. Um, I think mountains and seaside. If you've got mountains and or the sea or... Big hills, at least. Big and hills. it is very deserted up there in the Highlands. You know, yes. you have a lot of space to yourself. You hear your own voice. Yeah. And therefore you... Someone once told me that the entire population, well, the equivalent number of the mm -hmm. entire population of Scotland mm -hmm. commutes into London during a working week. A working day. Yes. A working day. I've always... That's commutes in, not the people that live here. There's two things that stick in my mind from childhood books of things you did not know. One is that the entire population of the world could be fitted onto the Isle of Wight. I still wonder if that's true. I don't believe that. Well, we could work it out. There's four billion people, and they each take up a square foot. Really crammed in? Yeah, but, really tight. Okay. Right. The Isle of Wight is 20 miles by 20 miles. How many square feet is that? No, 20 miles by 10 miles. Say. I've got no idea. Well, it's 200 square miles, isn't it? How many square feet? How many feet in a mile? No, I don't know. 5,280. So you spent too much time down the music wing, you, you see. You really did, didn't you? Yeah. 5,280 times 20 is what? No idea. Let's say it's, it's 50,000 and then... 50,000, 500,000... A million. A million feet. So the Isle of Wight is a million feet across, is that right? Yes. A million feet by 
500,000 feet. Well, it's pretty square, you know, the Isle of Wight. Right. Okay, so a million by 500,000. Okay. That is a hell of a lot. Yeah. That is more than people there are on Earth. That is. You could get the population of the world on the Isle of Wight. Crikey, would it sink? No. No. It's not floating. Yeah, but it's not a very sturdy island, though. It, it goes all the way down. It's the core of the Earth. How sturdy do you want? Yeah, it's a lot of weight. It goes down 12,000 miles. Ah, uh, but the core of the Earth is hollow. Well, I see, again, we don't know. You know, the deepest we've drilled is three miles. That's not very deep. No, it's not very deep. It's, not, it's very disappointing. I'm very disappointed with our miners. They should try harder. <laughs> Come on! Dig! And the other thing I learned when I was a child is that if the entire population of China simultaneously got on a table and jumped off, one, two, three, jump! Would the there Earth... really be a tidal wave? No, 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 the Earth would be knocked out of its orbit. Oh, that's not the one I heard. What I heard hear? that there were a tidal wave that would that would sweep across Britain. What, if the population of China, China all jumped off a table at the same time? Yeah. I don't know. Who sits and thinks of that? Who works know. that out? I, 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 I don't know. I... I don't care. I think what is also true is that if you get a storm, right, in the Florida Gulf, yeah, 5,000 miles away, six months later, a butterfly flaps its wings. That's probably true. I'd like to think it was. I do. Let's go to line five. A little bit mysterious, that. Line five, you're live on Talk Sport. Who do we have here? Hi, it's uh, Robert in Glasgow. Hi, Robert. How's it going? Good. Um, I was just wanting to make a couple of points. I'm just getting a bit frustrated here, hearing all the dissing you're giving Scotland at the moment on your radio station. Mm. Um, you were saying that we had a bitterness in our voice, which was kind of annoying. Yeah, from, uh, uh, sorry, it, it, like, it can be a rather acidic accent, the, the, the Glasgow accent. Be fair. The Glasgow accent? Aye. In, in what sense? Well, in the, it can it, it it can be um it can be acidic. I don't know. I I think you'll find it's a lot. I mean, there's no the, lilt about it. The bottom line is, it's I find it quite a friendly language as opposed to no. I mean, from our side of the border, hearing your accent, I mean, I don't I don't want to push any racial issues because obviously it's quite a fragile point the English Scottish thing, but um, we do find tedious. The classic middle upper class English voice that we're having to listen to at the moment. It seems to have this false superiority in it, mm. which really is frustrating for us. It's not the accent, though, it's what's being said. Um, the, the, the comment that's been made this evening is that um, an awful lot of Scottish people have rung up with uh, very churlish things to say. Right. Uncharitable things to say. So it's not really the accent just happens to be the case. And so an awful lot of Scottish people have rung up to apologise for that. So it's but nothing to do with me. Did you not just say that the Scottish accent was acidic? Yeah, it can be. Um, another point I'd like to make is Scottish football. In fact, before I say this, is this an English radio station? I don't really know what I'm listening to here. Well, um, it doesn't make any difference. You're listening to it and that's that. I'm not interested in definitions of... No, no, I'm, I'm just it. curious. Is it English or British? I don't know what the question means. Is the radio station part of the British Broadcasting Corporation? Uh, it... Yes, that's yes. That's why you hear so many commercials on it. It doesn't matter. If you know that no, little no. about it, it really is irrelevant. No, but the, I would stay with your ignorance on the that The point matter. I would like to make is, you have been slating Scottish football. No, I haven't. You have? No, I haven't. I said that Scottish football is not very good. That's not slating it. You, you did slate it, I'm afraid. I did. I said it's not very good, but this is, I've not, I don't waste time endlessly doing it i just said that scottish football is rather lamentable because it is yes but the fact is that it's yours is a british program and you're in and the listeners are entitled to not simply english football but a spectrum of british football this, this doesn't work you, you you seem to think you have some rights that you don't have well I'm you not... don't have any rights as regards this at all yes but i'd rather you're not you're paying, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not paying you your license for this? You're not paying your license for this? the entire English squad, this... giving us their middle names. So what? As if we really care about that. I don't... Well, you should care. 
Why? Why should I care? Because it's interesting. About English footballers' middle names. Because it's interesting, whether they're English footballers or Chinese In doctors. In what sense is it interesting? Well, I would have taken, for example, the fact that, for example, if I was intelligent, which I am, and perhaps you're, perhaps you're not, I would have noticed that some players have dynamic, imaginative middle names, and others do not. Right, that's very intriguing. Your intelligence surpasses all life forms. Well, it's, it's a point that's gone right over your head, pal. It's not gone over my head. It's simply the fact which that players have which players have radio listening. Which players have dynamic middle names? It it is not of any relevance to me. What's I mean, your middle name? That's a, why. Why would you want to know my middle name? Because I expect it's dull. You expect it's dumb. Well, that's a very intelligent comment. Well, tell me what it is then. Why? I'm not going to give you the. Because I'm right. You may be right. You may be wrong. No, if I was wrong, you'd tell me. Well. Maybe you'll just have to live your life wondering. I certainly won't do that. I can promise you of anything I can promise you, I can promise you that I'll forget this call as quickly right. as I can. Before I go, I'd just like to say the old firm Derby. In the, in England, do you know much about it? The Glasgow old firm Derby. How long have your family lived in Glasgow, pal? Pal? Um, Aye, pal. How long have your family lived in Glasgow? It's not a trick question. My family originates from the Highlands of Scotland. I see. At the well, moment, before I'm you go on Scotland. about the Glasgow Derby, all right? Yes. Find somebody who knows more about Glasgow than you do, and ask them what Boyd's bread was like when they bought it from Boyd's Bakers in Glasgow. Why? And the next time I have a drink with my cousin Matt Pollock, I'll ask him what it was like. Oh, sorry, is this your Scottish heritage? Play in a Glasgow Derby. So you toddle off back up to the Highlands where you belong. Heritage? And you leave Very the business impressive. of being Glaswegian to us proper Glaswegians. You're, you're a proper Glaswegian. That's it. With, you, with your, you haven't your got dinner no party. You haven't got no football up there in the Highlands. Hey. You're struggling. Have you're you on heard of Inverness now. Caledonian Thistle? You're dying on your have feet. You, sorry, have you, you heard of Inverness Caledonian Thistle? Inside out. You're not even as Scottish as me. <laughs> what does that feel like? You have the nerve to say that. What does that feel like, eh? It's I, uh, hey, Jimmy! The emotions that come to me. How's that one, eh? Are you, are you trying to overcome me by shouting at me? How about that for, how about that for a tough? I mean, simply by yelling down at me is not going to make you seem... I mean, no, you managed to overcome doing, some people on the radio. What I'm doing here is lifting the conversation because you're dull, like your middle I'm name. I'm dull. Like your middle name. This is coming from the man who's given us all the middle names of the Scottish, the English squad. If you don't have the intelligence to work out, work out why that's valid and interesting... Why, I'm not gonna, I'm, the reason I'm not going to labour the point... The reason I'm not going to labour the point, okay, is because I want people to work out... Now, you go away. This is your job for the week, right? right. You've got the intelligence to work out which of the players had dynamic middle names and why, and which of the players had dull, tight arsed middle names... Sorry, did you say tight arsed? ...and why... Sorry, okay, can I just verify you said you tight arsed? If you can work that out, okay... No, no, no sorry, I just and want you to repeat it so that I could Next week, it. okay... Then you will have yes learned something. What exactly will I've learned, though? Well, you find out the answer, and then you'll have learned it. No, but if you could tell me in no, of course I'm not prior to my learning discovery, then I somebody, won't have to waste my time. You, you won't be wasting your time if you are told something. You don't learn it. You only yes. learn things that you find out by yourself. If you That's remember, not true. Ha! Huh, what do you know about teaching? What do I know about teaching? Yeah, I know that you don't need to learn things yourself to work Are you a qualified out. lecturer in the theory of education? Are you trying to scare me with some sort of qualification you I'm may seem to have? telling you that I am. Well, that doesn't impress me at all. Now, you come on here and teachers, start... Teachers are some of the most ill-educated members of our public at the moment. Maybe, but don't tell me what's learning. I will tell you whatever I think, though. You, you seem to seem... You seem to have this ideal that you're in a position of superiority because you have this radio show. No, no. On, uh, uh, have you actually thought of the fact that your radio station is broadcasting at three in the morning, four, five, that sort of hours? The reason that I, I mean, feel you're superior not a success to you is because I am. You are what? Superior to you. F what is your judgment in that? You don't know me and you're c assuming that you're superior to me. Does that not just reek of unintelligence? I'm superior to you because I would never humiliate myself by ringing a radio program. Right. Okay. Instead, you humiliate yourself by broadcasting a radio program. 
That yeah, is I'll, quite impressive, I have I'll, to admit. I'll see you at the paying counter at the bank, Cocker. The paying counter of the bank? What does that mean? Well, again, if you think about it during the week, you might be able to actually join up some of the dots. Are you, are you trying to say that in some way Scottish people are related to Doe? No. What is your point then? Sorry, I, I, I can't make the connection here. Perhaps no, it's my... because I'm superior to you and I make superior points to you. Right. That's, that's very interesting. And I do that because I want you to go away and think about it. You them. seem to just keep repeating the fact that you're superior without giving me any reason to... And the, well, the no, fact, I, I, did, I, fact, did, I did give you a reason, but you, I did give you... What was the reason I gave you? I gave you the reason. The reason why I gave you that I am superior to you is that I would not humiliate myself by phoning up a radio programme. So I did give you a reason. the reason I think I'm superior to you is because I'm simply phoning this radio station, whereas you're broadcasting yourself. Yes, that's right. Well... Uh, it doesn't work, does it? What doesn't work? What you just said. Why doesn't it work? Well, if you just think about it, I want you, I want you to... Really think about it. You seem to actually not pay attention to what the callers are saying, unless it's they're making the point that, oh, I really like your show. It's good to have you back, Tommy Boyd. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, there was one man who said, in the midst of your quite self-indulgent comments about the middle names of English, I hate to come back to this. It's not as if I'm... It really annoyed you that, didn't it? Didn't no, you not particularly. How, how it was no, no, that's the third time you brought it up. You must have, you must no, have a very is, low threshold of irritation. Further, this is a further point, right? And uh, I tell you, let me tell you something else about you, because no, I know may, you. May I just say I know this you before very you interrupt? Well because, because you no, seem, because you've you interrupted me a lot, and I haven't interrupted you once. Sorry, I'll let you carry on, but if you let me make my point after. No, of course, by all means. Thank you. Go ahead. By all means. I know you. That's uh, quite terrifying. You just interrupted me. He paused as if that was the end of it. Right, carry on, sir. Sometimes people pause. Do you ever listen to Radio 4? Yes. You interrupted me again. That was a rhetorical question. <laughs> um, this is the last time, okay? You're a very stupid man because I asked you not to interrupt me and the first time you interrupted me after about three words and the second time you interrupted me about, uh, after about another three words. Now, this is your last chance. You're going to shut up. Okay. I can't be able to talk to you now, so you say your boring point and then get off, okay? Okay. The point I was willing... No, 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 no. I wasn't going to let him, was I? Terrible man. Hey, I'm, I know Scotland isn't like all like him because, uh, I, you know, all my grandparents are Scottish. I'm Scottish through and through. A son of a Geordie and a Cambridge woman, but both sets of grandparents Scottish. Born in London, so I'm I'm, 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 I'm travelled. I'm, it's these people who've just lived in a tiny little keyhole of the of the United Kingdom who I feel sorry about. What was that bloke the other night who I said, "Are you travelled?" And he said, "Yes, I've lived in three different boroughs in London." Gee, what a man of the world! But the Scots are giving themselves a bad name tonight, aren't they, Paul? I quite liked him. I I, I didn't like him. I would never like to be near him, but um, he was quite good fun. Yeah, I thought so. He didn't get that thing I was doing about middle names. Shall I explain why I found what I found interesting about the middle names thing? Or shall uh, I leave it? No, I don't, I don't think you should leave it. I will. I but it was obvious to me that certain players had dynamic middle names and, and first names. And other players did not. It didn't surprise me that Teddy Sheringham was a Paul. <laughs> oh, was a lovely, no, it's a lovely name, Paul, but... The middle name, it doesn't... It doesn't, it doesn't work as a middle name, it's, it's true. As middle Jer names need to be dynamic. Not as good as Jeremiah or Ivan Ivanhoe. Ivanhoe is a fantastic middle name. Who am I going to look up now? I'll give you another middle name. I bet you Rio Ferdinand has got a cracking middle name. Do you reckon? I think... I think He's got a cracking first name! <laughs> He's Ferdinand not, he's not is be, a good name. He's not going to be. That would be an excellent middle name. He's not going to be Rio Kenneth Ferdinand, no, is he? He's not. He is see. not. He is not. I can't find him now. Oh God! <laughs> I couldn't be more wrong. His middle name's Gavin. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> that is cracking. We'll call so he's got two great names already. Oh, Rio Gavin Ferdinand. That is stunning. That is so unlikely. He's a Peckham boy, it says here. Right, okay. It's Rio Ferdinand. Anybody else? Dennis Wise. Now, do you reckon he's got a, a middle name from the Bible or something? Go on. Uh, he's of a slightly older age. Uh, it's beginning to seem as if yeah, the older yeah, the player, yeah. the more well, interesting... 
Well, that's an interesting theory, what you've got. And you've got a theory more than the Scottish man had. This is, this is, that you, you're barking up the right tree here. He is Dennis Frank. Frank, Why? noble name. It's a noble name, and that's probably a grandfather. Yeah. I would guess. Because yeah. that's a very common English thing, isn't it? I can't think of anybody else who I'm with. Beckham. Oh, he's got oh, 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 Jason. I bet it's Jason. <laughs> or Gary. Oh, no, 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 no. This is great stuff. Because, you know, the psychologist Eric Burns said, you learn a great deal from a person, about a person, by looking at their birth certificate. Because you find out what their parents' aspirations were for them. And those aspirations will have somehow entered into their personality. You made it, Keith. Morning, Tom. Morning. We were worried about the clock thing. We thought you might not. Well, we thought you might wake up an hour late and think. No, I did actually set the clock, but well then done. I forgot to pull the alarm button out on the electric one, but the manual one went off. The manual so, one went off. And I was awake waiting for it anyway. Cracking. Good. Cracking. See you in 10 minutes. There, Thank you for the cuppa. You're very welcome. He says he is a nice man. All fishermen are nice people. I've noticed that. Beckham, David Beckham. Yes. To Beckham, Robert. I uh, thought it would be something like that. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. See, Robert, and I bet you we can guess that Paul Scholes is something like Albert. I'd you. like to know what the Neville brothers' middle names are. I can tell you. I can tell the you. The Neville brothers' father has got an excellent name. Yeah. Neville. Gary's middle name is Alex, and Philip's middle name is John. Uh, Alex is... You can't see it up in lights, can you? This is my point. You can't see it up in lights. And what that means is it's al that almost that their children's success is a surprise to their parents. But if you're called Ivanhoe Heskey, yes, you're going yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna to yeah. go somewhere. Yeah. If you're called... Ambitious parents, that was. Sulzia Jeremiah Campbell, you're not going to end up stacking shelves. I'll just have a look at Paul Scholes. This is an important tip for parents. Give your child some sort of a name. God's sake. S-C-H-O-L-E-S. -E no middle name. Paul Scholes. That's it. But you see, there is a syndrome. And if you have the sociologist's mind, the psychologist's mind, Put me book back in the briefcase. Um, then there's stuff to be done. 08700 40 50 60 is the telephone number. You're tuned to Talk Sport. Oi, you listening to me? What? Talk Sport. I've got next month's Lennox Lewis fight covered. Oh, right. But keep it to yourself or there'll be trouble. You know what I mean? All right. Lennox Lewis versus Michael Grant live from Madison Square Garden, New York on Saturday, 29th of April, only on Talk Sport. But keep it to yourself. You know what I mean? Britain's richest man of all time was worth more than Bill Gates and 18 times more than Richard Branson. Who was he? Find out. Read The Richest of the Rich List, the first of its kind, an extraordinary historical study detailing the 200 richest Britons over the last millennium. As for Richard Branson, he still made the list, steaming in at number 168. The Richest of the Rich, this weekend... Only in the Sunday Times. Sound advice with Gary Jacobs. Something seriously has to be done. The thing you've got to do is stop putting yourself into the lion's den. Thank you. You're very welcome. It's a firearm and under the firearms that you can go to prison for possession of a pepper spray. Thank and you very much for that. You're very welcome. Sound advice with Gary Jacobs. Tonight from 8 on Talk Sport. A look ahead this um, coming Sunday on Talk Sport in a few moments. Uh, Keith will be here with the Fisherman's Blues, Keith Arthur. Uh, you can book your call now if you want to join the queue, 08700 40 50 60. Then at 7 o'clock, it's Sunday morning kickabout with Paul Hawksby and Andy Jacobs taking your calls on every football topic under the sun. Plus the latest from the Irish Masters snooker, the Players' Championship Golf in Florida, and the build-up to the Brazilian Grand Prix. And then from 10 until midday, it's the boardroom with Tony Lockwood. And this week's special guest, another opportunity to hear Gillingham Chairman Paul Scally. Tony Banks Sporting Lunch is from 12 till 2. This week's topic is the changing relationship between football clubs and their supporters. Do call Tony. Give him a hard time. He's a politician. Give him a hard time. Don't say I agree with you, Tony. Whatever you do, phone Tony Banks and say, I disagree with you, Tony. Get him going. Get him on the ropes. God's sake. Speaking about on the ropes, 
I'll tell you the problem with Lennox Lewis is he wants the British public to like him, but nobody, no, the British do not warm to people called Lennox because it's just not right. And he should change his name to Len the Ox Lewis. Then you've got a British heavyweight. Then he's a wrestler, though, surely. Well, it's just that lots of British sporting heroes are called Len. It's a proud sporting name, Len. And then you've got the ox bit, but he is a bit of an ox. He's big. You see what I'm saying? I do. Thank I do you. see what you're saying. You're a very kind man. And then from two until five, it's Sunday Sport with Chris Mann and Graham Kelly. Your views on the forthcoming uh, promotion relegation issues. We've got a busy week for the English clubs in Europe. You may want to give them a call once you've sorted your thoughts out. The ongoing row over the eligibility of rugby internationals. Ludicrous, isn't it? Does it run the business of the grandparent? Uh, plus updates. I mean, if you had to be born in the country, England wouldn't have any cricketers. Name me the last England cricket team that contained eight men who were born in England. Never mind about 11 men who were born in England. God's sakes. I bet you there hasn't been in living memory an England cricket team that contained 11 Englishmen. So forget it. Um... Plus, they've got the updates on all the afternoon's football. This is on Sunday Sport 2 till 5. And the morning practice ahead of the Brazilian Grand Prix. But it's Keith next. That's the main thing. Oh, it's 700, 40, 50, 60. We'll go to line four. Good morning. You're on Talk Sport. Morning, Tommy. Sir. Great show. It is. Diamental arithmetic. Yeah. Well, that then, woman. Which one? Well, that was in your eyes listening, or in your ears, listening to you for nine hours. You're yeah. not on at 7 o'clock in the morning. No, well, it was a snap thing. I... Oh, all right then. And there's nothing wrong with a bit of exaggeration. But an admission that your mental arithmetic was a bit out there. You, you, you notice too much. <laughs> you You're a, a grand man, Tommy. Keep You're, up the you, good you work. You need so. a hobby. I will. Take care. And you. Bye. What a nice man. What a nice call that was. 08700 40 50 60. Line 2. You're live on TalkSport. Good morning. No? Okay. Good old lion one. It's always good for a hoot. Perhaps it's the voodoo man, perhaps it's a Scot. Hello? Hello. Hello, I'll just turn the radio down. It's a soft go. talking... Hello, I was just, um, I was like talking to myself earlier and I thought I'd be in an imbecile and I thought I'd touch the moon. And what I did was I touched the moon and instead of being Sylvia Plath, because you know it's like a pitcher of milk, well, it was just a little dab of milk, so I put it on my forehead and on my chair and on my groin. And... You know that fat laughing man giggles a bit. I said to him, what, what do you want to do with me? And he said nothing. Oh, and, you know, I just sat down for a while and I listened to you and I thought, oh, you know that middle name you've got, Tommy? Mm -hmm. That middle name. Mm -hmm. It's not the one with the words. You know, it's the other one. Because mm -hmm. words can be material things as well, can't they? If you like, yeah. Oh, well, it's been nice listening to you. I'd like to say thank you to that Scottish chap I found earlier. Mm -hmm. It makes me... Sort of like feel a bit warm inside. Mm. I'll go now. Anyway. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Juicy fruit. Mm. Hello. Line two. You're live on talks. Cool. We get the nut nutters completely out of the way. If you're a fisherman, can you leave it for five minutes? <laughs> we'll get the nutters out of the way. Uh, can we have a nutter on line three, please? Good morning, you're on talk radio. Sport. I think you're fantastic, Tommy. Yeah, you are a nutter, aren't you? Clear off. No, I think you're fantastic. You're, uh, go, go on, clear off. You're brilliant. All right, I'm then. A, I, hey, I'm not a nutter. No? My middle name's Pyrex. I want to test you, baby. Line four. Yeah, there we are. That's more like it. That's more like it. Line five. Hello? Hello. Hello, Tommy. Um, you didn't read my fax out, and I was desperate that you you would do. Because well, which I, one is it? Um, it, it? It's about plenty. It's from... Oh, right. Yes, OK. I will read it out. You're Cameron. No, no, I'm not Cameron. No, you're Paul. I'm Paul. You're yeah, Stevenage. I just wanted to compliment Cameron on his um, intelligent um, uh, views, not just on, on your show, but every no. time I've heard him. He's good enough, isn't he? He's the man. You have faxed a photograph of Stevenage Woods. Yeah. And you have written... It is all a path through the woods. We call us phone up because we do believe we can make a difference by the call, which is why people call up and tell you how much they like your show. We like the conversation. We listen for that. But if someone can tell me where I can find a copy of Pliny, I might see a shortcut. 5,000 years ago, this book contained all the known medical resources learned by the human race in 20,000 or more years. 
Best wishes, Paul. Do you mean Pliny the Elder? Um, I, I, don't, I don't know that, that much about it, but I do know there's this guy called Pliny who was a Greek. Yes. And um, he wrote this book, and it must have taken him years. He did. And it contained all the um, knowledge about uh, herbal remedies yes. and, and everything uh, that the human race knew at that point in time. I think we've unlearned a lot of stuff that we that, that was probably in that book that would have been good for, uh, uh, which the NHS should read, if yes. you know what I mean, right now. I quote to you from my school song. Are you ready? Yep, go on. <clears throat> okay. Stand firm, united sons of Tudor. Join your voice. Are you listening? Yeah, I'm listening. Loud and clear. Call men to hearken while great Pliny's words of praise. Are you listening? Yep. Ah, sir, got a pen. I'm reaching for one. Ah, sounded here. Nulla die sine lineum. Nulla, N U double L A. N U. U. Double L A. Double L A. Sine, S I N E. S I N A. Sine, Sine, S I N E. Yeah. Sine, Linnea. L I N E A. E. Nulla dies. Oh, we missed that dies, didn't I? Nulla dies. D I E S. Sine, Linnea. All right. Is this helping? Not as it's not as much as if you told me which university you might have a copy of it. Try the British Library, or go into your own library. Your own library will be able to get you a copy of any book that any library in Britain's ever had. They work like that. They're networked. Yeah, no, I do know that. But, I'm, I mean, I haven't been able to... I haven't been able... I've, I've tried for, for, for years, you know. Hmm. And, 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 and maybe because I'm an idiot, um, I've failed. But um, I, ne I need to find one uh, reasonably quickly. Because... What is wrong with you? Well, I, I, you know, I mean, you know, you, you get through to people and they don't give you any No, answers. no, no. What is your ailment that you need to consult this book? This is desperate stuff. Well, it's not for me, actually. It's for somebody else. And um, uh, I, I, because they're probably li listening or might be hearing... OK, fair enough. Um, I don't want to say, right. but... Um, it's not an ear problem, then? Well, no, it's a... No, you, you, I don't want to say too much. Fair enough. But, um... um Essentially, um, um, I, I, he had cures for all sorts of things, yes. um, which were based on <clears throat> um, things that people could do either themselves or whatever. The Roman Empire existed, for, I'm told, for 600 years um, without the use of a doctor. And that was presumably because people who were, you know, like fairly, well, I guess they were shopkeepers or something like that, could supply the remedies for the various ailments mm. based on the knowledge that they gained. I mean, mm. uh, all that time ago, um, that sort of knowledge would have been as accessible as, as, as you know, email is to us today. It's but, surprising um, how little has remained of the uh, knowledge and culture of, of the Romans. Well, and the Egyptians as well. Yeah. Okay, well, look, who knows? Uh, uh, it, I, well, if, if, somebody, if, if somebody out there... Very, very unlikely. You're much better off with your own labours, and I wish you luck, and let me know if you succeed. Well, I'll certainly let you know if I succeed, but m more to the point, if there, if there is by any chance, and I'm sure, the, I, I'm sure, you know, everything in this world is connected, as you said a little bit earlier, or as somebody else was saying a little bit earlier, um, if you uh, raise a hurricane in... Um, yes, a butterfly flaps its wings. Thank you. Most of the point, Keith is next with the Fisherman's Blues. Talk to you tomorrow.